Robert Plant, one of the most enigmatic figures in rock history, remains as restless in his artistic pursuits today as he was when he first emerged from the primordial mix of hard rock and blues that defined Led Zeppelin. His solo career, which began in earnest after Zeppelin's dissolution in 1980, saw the frontman pushing the boundaries of his musical identity, venturing far beyond the confines of the genre that first made him a household name. This willingness to explore new sonic landscapes is perhaps one of the defining characteristics of Plant's work over the last four decades. It's a journey that has taken him from the bombast of Zeppelin's rock anthems to the subtle intricacies of Americana, folk and world music. Plant's recent appearance on BBC Radio 6's Festive Takeover in 2021 offered a window into his eclectic tastes as he shared some of his favourite songs, each reflecting a different chapter of his own musical story. His selections spoke of a man who has never been content with staying in one place, artistically or emotionally, and whose influences span an astonishing range of genres and eras. The Rolling Stones were among the first acts to be mentioned, specifically their 1968 track, Street Fighting Man. For Plant, the song encapsulated the political and social turbulence of the late 1960s, a period when rock music became a vehicle for rebellion and dissent. The raw energy and defiance of Street Fighting Man seemed to speak directly to the youthful Plant. who saw in Mick Jagger and Keith Richards the power of music to challenge authority, even if revolution by record alone remained an elusive dream. The Stones, like Zeppelin, drew heavily on the blues, but where the Stones projected a scrappy, confrontational swagger, Zeppelin tapped into something deeper, darker and more mythic. Yet for Plant, the ethos of the Stones, especially in their more politically charged moments, clearly resonated with his own restless spirit. Blues, however, remains at the very heart of Plant's musical DNA, and nowhere is this more evident than in his admiration for Howlin' Wolf, whose track 44 was another standout on Plant's playlist. Howlin' Wolf's thunderous voice and raw, primal energy made him one of the most formidable figures in the Chicago blues scene, and Plant has often spoken of the profound impact hearing Wolf had on him as a teenager. There's something elemental about Wolf's music, a cross-timing groove that breaks the rules and yet feels utterly right, that fascinated Plant. And it's no exaggeration to say that Zeppelin's entire blues-rock fusion owes a great deal to Wolf's pioneering work. In Plant's words, the Wolf was a figure both menacing and charismatic, a force of nature that embodied the kind of visceral power Plant would later unleash with Zeppelin. Yet Plant's tastes are not confined to the familiar blues or rock pantheons. His admiration for Canadian singer-songwriter Feist underscores his ongoing fascination with the new and the experimental. Her song, Undiscovered First, with its haunting blend of indie sensibilities and folk-like lyricism, stands as a testament to the innovative spirit Plant continues to champion. Feist, much like Plant in his later years, draws from a wide array of influences to craft songs that defy easy categorization. It's this diversity of sound and feeling that seems to captivate Plant, whose own solo work, especially his collaborations with Alison Krauss, reflects a similarly adventurous ethos. The Americana thread that runs through Plant's later career is further evidenced by his friendship with Lucinda Williams, another artist whose work straddles the lines between rock, country and folk. Williams's song, Sweet Old World, represents a poignant reflection on life, death and regret, themes that Plant himself has explored in his own music, particularly in the years since Zeppelin's demise. It is in Williams's gritty, unflinching storytelling that Plant seems to find a kindred spirit, someone whose work possesses the same depth of feeling and emotional resonance that has long been a hallmark of his own songwriting. Indeed, it is perhaps the emotional truth of these songs, the raw, unvarnished humanity, that appeals most to Plant. See what you lost when you left this world this sweet old world 
what you lost when you left this world, this sweet old world. Sandy Denny, whose collaboration with Zeppelin on the Battle of Evermore remains one of the band's most stirring moments, was another figure whose work Plant deeply admired. Fotheringay's John the Gun was one of his selections during the festive takeover, a song imbued with both political bite and a deep sense of personal vulnerability. Denny's voice, ethereal yet powerful, embodied the kind of paradox that Plant himself often explores in his music, the tension between strength and fragility, between myth and reality. Plant's reverence for these diverse voices speaks not only to his own eclectic tastes, but also to his enduring commitment to artistic evolution. Even as he enters his twilight years, there is no sense that Plant is content to rest on the laurels of his past glories. Instead, he continues to search, to explore, to push the boundaries of what music can be. His journey from the thunderous roar of whole lot of love to the subtle textures of his recent work with Alison Krauss is testament to an artist who refuses to be defined by any one genre or moment in time. Perhaps what is most remarkable about Robert Plant is that, even after decades in the spotlight, he remains as curious and passionate about music as he was when he first heard Howlin' Wolf or The Stones. His choices on the festive takeover show revealed not only a deep respect for the giants of rock and blues, but also an openness to new sounds and ideas. It's this willingness to keep learning, to keep evolving, that has allowed Plant to remain one of rock's most vital and enduring figures. The man who once stood at the forefront of one of the loudest and most powerful bands in history now moves to a different rhythm, one that is quieter, more reflective, but no less impactful. His is the music of a man who has lived many lives, who has seen and heard it all, and who still, somehow, remains entranced by the magic of a well-played song. In that sense, Robert Plant's journey is far from over. It is, in fact, only just beginning.